World Altitude Record Mountaineering In the history of mountaineering, the world altitude record referred to the highest point on the Earth's surface which had been reached, regardless of whether that point was an actual summit. The world summit record referred to the highest mountain to have been successfully climbed. The terms are most commonly used in relation to the history of mountaineering in the Himalaya and Karakoram ranges, though modern evidence suggests that it was not until the 20th century that mountaineers in the Himalaya exceeded the heights which had been reached in the Andes. The altitude and summit records rose steadily during the early 20th century until 1953, when the ascent of Mount Everest made the concept obsolete. 19th century and before European exploration of the Himalaya began in earnest during the mid-19th century, and the earliest people known to have climbed in the range were surveyors of the Great Trigonometric Survey GTS. During the 1850s and 1860s they climbed dozens of peaks of over 6,000, 120,000 ft, and several of over 6,421,000 ,000 ft in order to make observations, and it was during this period that claims to have ascended the highest point yet reached by man began to be made. Most of these early claims have now been rendered invalid by the discovery of the bodies of three children at the 6,739 and 22,110 FT summit of Lilelako in South America. Inca sacrifices dated. There is no direct evidence that the Incas reached higher points but the discovery of the skeleton of a guanaco on the summit ridge of Aconcagua 6,962 M22,841 FT suggests that they also climbed on that mountain, and the possibility of pre-Columbian ascents of South America's highest peak cannot be ruled out. In the Himalaya yaks have been reported at heights of up to 6,120,000 ,000 ft and the summer snow line can be as high as 6,521,300 ft. It is likely that local inhabitants went to such heights in search of game, and possibly higher, while exploring trade routes, but they did not live there, and there is no evidence that they attempted to climb the summits of the Himalaya before the arrival of Europeans. In August 1855, the Bavarian brothers Adolf and Robert Schlagentwait of the Magnetic Survey of India made an attempt to climb Kamet 7000, spending 10 days above 17,000 FT 5000, from their highest camp at 19,325 FT 5890 M. They and some of their guides and carriers reached an altitude of 22,000. 259 FT 6,785 M, according to their barometric measurements, which would have put them higher than Lilelako. Many early claims of world altitude records are muddied by incomplete surveying and lack of knowledge of local geography, which have led to reassessments of many of the heights which were originally claimed. In 1862, a Kalasian Indian assistant of the GTS climbed Shilla a summit in Himachal Pradesh which was claimed to be over 7,000 and 23,000 ft high. More recent surveys have, however, fixed its height at 6,111 and 20,049 ft. Three years later, William Johnson of the GTS claimed to have climbed a 7,284 and 23,898 ft peak during an illicit journey into China, but the mountain he climbed has since been measured at 6,710 and 22,014 ft, above 7,000 m. The first pure mountaineers, as opposed to surveyors to have climbed in the Himalaya, were the English barrister William Graham, the Swiss hotelier Emil Boss, and the Swiss mountain guide Ulrich Kaufmann, who together climbed extensively in the area in 1883. The previous year Graham had made the first ascent of the Dent du Gint, and Boss and Kaufman had equally notably very nearly made the first ascent of Aoraki slash Mount Cook in New Zealand. Among others, they claimed a near ascent of Dunajiri reaching about 6,900 m, an ascent of Changabang 6,864 m, 22,520 ft in July in the Garhul Himalaya, and an ascent to 30 feet below the east summit of Cabru 7,000, 338 meters, 24. 
it is not claimed that they lied about their ascents, rather that the poor quality of maps at the time may have led them to be unsure of which mountain they were actually on, and to make estimates of their height, which owed more to wishful thinking than scientific measurements. Their description of Changabang is so at variance with the mountain itself that their claim was doubted almost immediately, and by 1955 was not taken seriously anymore. The team's ascent over the east face of Cabru is less readily dismissed. Although their report of views of Mount Everest from the top appears convincing, their claim was, however, supported in the following years by climbers such as Douglas Freshfield, Norman Colley, Edmund Garwood, Carl Rubinson, and Tom Longstaff, and more recently Walt Unsworth has argued that as a man who was more interested in climbing than in making observations, the vagueness of his description is to be expected, and that now Everest has been climbed. In 2009, Willie Blaser and Glyn Hughes wrote a spirited defense of the ascent in the Alpine Journal, arguing that Graham and Boss's criticism of the maps of the Garhol Himalaya had led to bad blood. If Graham, Boss, and Kaufman did climb Cabru, it was a remarkable achievement for its time, establishing an altitude record which was not broken for 26 years. Nine years later, another claim to the world altitude record was made by Martin Conway in the course of his expedition to the Karakoram in 1892. Together with Matthias Zerbergen and Charles Granville Bruce, Conway made an attempt on Baltoro Kangri, and on 25 August reached a subsidiary summit, which he named Pioneer Peak. The barometer showed a height of 22,600 ft 6,900 m, which Conway optimistically rounded up to 23,000 ft over 7,000 m. However, Pioneer Peak has since been measured at only 6,501 meters 21,329 ft. On 14 January 1897, Matthias Zerbrigen went on to make the first recorded ascent of Aconcagua in the Andes. Aconcagua is 6,962 meters 22,841 ft high and, if the claims of Boss and Graham are discounted, was still the highest point to have been reached at that time. It was several more years before the 7,000 m barrier would be broken with reasonable certainty. In July 1905, Tom George Longstaff, accompanied by the Alpine guides Alexis and Henry Brotterell from Kermayer, and six local porters, made an attempt on Gurlamand Hatta. The height they reached is estimated at between 7,000 and 23,000 ft and 7,324,000 ft greater than the height of Aconcagua. In 1907, Longstaff and the Brotterell brothers returned to the Himalayas and led an expedition with the aim of climbing Nanda Divi, but unable to penetrate its sanctuary of surrounding peaks turned their attention to Trisal, which they climbed on June 12. At 7,120 meters 23,360 ft, Trisal became the highest summit to have been climbed whose height was accurately known and whose ascent was undisputed. This altitude record, though not the summit record, was broken a few months later, on 20 October 1907, when the Norwegians Carl Wilhelm Rubinson and Inveld Monrad us came within 50 m of ascending the 7,338 m east summit of Cabru. It is noteworthy that Carl Rubinson afterwards believed that Graham, Voss, and Kaufman had ascended that summit 24 years before. An undisputed new altitude record was achieved in 1909 by the Duke of the Abruzzi's expedition to the Karakoram. After failing to make progress on K2, the Duke led an attempt on Chagalisa, where they reached a height of approximately 7,524,000. The undisputed summit record, though not the altitude record, was broken by 8 meters on June 14, 1911, when the Scottish chemist, explorer, and mountaineer Alec Kellis, together with the Sherpa's Sony and Tunney's brother, climbed the 7,128 meters 23,386 ft high pole. Until the late 20th century, this mountain was thought to be only 7,065 meters 23,179 ft, so this record was not realized at the time.
British Everest expeditions. The world altitude record was not broken again until the British expeditions to Mount Everest, and would then become the exclusive preserve of climbers on the world's highest mountain. On the 1922 expedition, the record was broken twice. On 20 May, George Mallory, Howard Somerville, and Edward Norton reached 8,170 and 26,800 ft on the mountain's north ridge without using supplemental oxygen. Three days later, George Finch and Jeffrey Bruce, using supplemental oxygen, followed the same route and went even higher turning around at about 8,320 and 27,300 ft when Bruce's oxygen apparatus failed. In 1924, the British made another attempt on Everest, and the world altitude record was again broken. On 4 June, Edward Norton, without supplemental oxygen, reached a point on the mountain's great cool war 8,570 and 28,000, 120 ft high, his companion Howard Somerville having turned around a short distance before. This was an altitude record which would not be broken, with certainty, until the 1950s, or without supplemental oxygen until 1978. Three days later, George Mallory and Andrew Irvine disappeared while making their own attempt on the summit. There has been much debate over whether they reached a greater height than Norton, or even the summit, but as there is no direct proof, they are not generally credited with a record. The British made several further expeditions to Mount Everest in the 1930s. Twice in 1933, climbing parties reached approximately the same point as Norton First Lawrence Wager and Percy Wynne Harris and later Frank Smythe, but there was no advance on Norton's record. Interwar years While there would be no advance on the altitude record, until the 1950s, the summit record was broken five times in the interwar years. The first was by just another six meters, when on 15 September 1928 the German mountaineers Karl Wien and Eugen Olwen and the Austrian mountaineer and cartographer Erwin Stader reached the summit of the 7,134 and 23,406 F.T. Kaufmann Peak in the Pamirs, a mountain up to that year, thought to be the after the expedition, it was renamed Lenin Peak. The next advance was a byproduct of the international expedition to Kanchenjunga led by Gunter de Rinfurth in 1930. The attempt on Kanchenjunga itself was abandoned after an avalanche had killed Chetan Sherbro, but members of the team stayed to climb a number of smaller peaks in the area. Erwin Schneider, who had barely escaped the avalanche, broke his own summit record twice in two weeks. On 24 May, he solo climbed 7,177 and 23,557 FD Nepal Peak near Karat Chuli, and on 3 June, Herman Harlan, and he climbed 7,460. In 1931, the summit record was broken again with the ascent of Kamet. Frank Smythe, Eric Shipton, R.L. Holdsworth and Lua Sherpa reached the summit on 21 June. At 7,756 in 25,446 FT, Kamet was the first mountain over 7,500 M and 25,000 FT to be climbed. The summit record was raised once more before the Second World War brought an effective halt to mountaineering in the Himalaya. Nanda Divi, at 7,816 in 25,643 ft, the highest mountain wholly within the British Empire, had been the object of several expeditions, and it was finally climbed on 29 August 1936 by Bill Tillman and Noel Odell. 1950s and Ascent of Everest After the Second World War, the formerly closed and secretive Kingdom of Nepal, wary of the intentions of the People's Republic of China and seeking friends in the West, began to open its borders. For the first time its peaks, including the south side of Everest, became accessible to Western mountaineers, triggering a new wave of exploration. There was one further improvement on the summit record before Everest was conquered. On 3 June 1950, Annapurna, 8,091 M 26,535 FT became the first 8,000 M mountain to be climbed, 
when the French climbers Maurice Herzog and Louis Lachinal reached its summit on the 1950 French Annapurna expedition. Both Herzog and Lachinal lost their toes to frostbite. Herzog also lost most of his fingers. The first attempt to climb Everest from the south was made by a Swiss team in 1952. The expedition's high point was reached by Raymond Lambert and the team's Nepali Indian Sardar Tenzing Norgay on 26 May, when they reached a point approximately 200 and 650 ft below the south summit before turning around in the knowledge that they would not reach the summit in daylight. Their estimated height of 8,628,210 ft was slightly higher than the previous altitude record set by the British on the north side of the mountain. The Swiss made further attempts later in May, and again in autumn after the monsoon, but did not regain Lambert and Tenzing's high point. Mount Everest was climbed the following year. On 26 May, three days before the successful attempt, Tom Bertolin and Charles Evans reached the south summit before turning back due to malfunctioning oxygen apparatus. Their height of 8,000 760 and 28,750 ft represented a new, short-lived, altitude record, and can be seen as a summit record if this is taken to include minor tops as well as genuine mountains. Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay finally reached the 8,848 and 29,029 ft true summit on 29 May 1953, marking the final chapter in the history of the mountaineering altitude record. While the exact height of Everest summit is subject to minor variation due to the level of snow cover and the gradual upthrust of the Himalaya, significant changes to the world altitude record are now impossible. Women's altitude record Female mountaineers were rare in the early 20th century and the maximum height attained by a woman lagged behind that claimed by male climbers. The first woman to climb extensively in the Karakoram was Fanny Bullock Workman, who made a number of ascents, including that of Pinnacle Peak, a 6,930 and 22,740 ft subsidiary summit of Nun Kun in 1906. Her claim on the women's altitude record was challenged by Annie Smith Peck in 1908 after she made an ascent of the north peak of Huascarin, which she claimed was higher than Pinnacle Peak. The ensuing controversy was bitter and public, and eventually resolved in Bullock Workman's favor when she hired a team of surveyors to measure the height of Huascarin. The north peak was found to be 6,648 and 21,811 ft tall, some 600 and lower than Smith Peck's estimate. In 1934, Hetty de Rinfirth, wife of Gunter de Rinfirth, became the first woman to exceed 7,000 m when she climbed Jakangri 7,422 m 24,350 ft. Her summit record would stand for 25 years, though her altitude record was broken by the French climber Claude Cogan, who reached approximately 7,624,900 ft on Choyu in 1954. The following year saw the first all-female team to visit the Himalayas, made up of Monica Jackson, Evelyn McNichol, and Elizabeth Betty Stark, making the first ascent of Jialjin Peak, 6,151 and 20,180 ft. In 1959, Fantog of the Chinese female mountaineering team reached the summit of Mustag Atta, at 7,509 and 24,636 ft. Fantog later went on to become the second woman to summit Mount Everest 11 days after Junko Tebai. The first female ascent of an 8,000 and peak came in 1974, when three Japanese women, Masako Uchida, Mikomori, and Naoko Nakasiko climbed Manaslu at 8,163 and 26,000 781 ft. A year later, Junko Tebai of Japan made the first female ascent of Mount Everest on 16 May 1975. The highest mountain to have had a female first ascent is Gasherbrum Roman 3, 7,946 and 26,070 ft, which was first climbed by Alison Chadwick on Eskewix 
and Wanda Rupkiewicz along with two male climbers in August 1975. 